have this strong affinity for the species of snakes. Now, fun fact, and you've also gone on to say that… I have a strong affinity for all species. People take pictures only when I pick up a snake. When I pick up a grasshopper, nobody does it <laughs> um, You've gone on to say that there's no such creature which is as perceptive as the snake. So, um, fun fact, Shamanpet is a snake-infested area. We have loads of snakes around campus. Here? Yeah, in Nalsar. So It's not snake-infested. This was their homeland exactly. and you have invaded… Exactly. Exactly. That's something everybody agrees That's something on. everybody acknowledges, we have come to their homeland. So this is where my question is going. Um, is, so is there any specific reason why we are so fearful of these species when they themselves are equally fearful of us? So how do we, I mean, how do we train our mind to overcome this paranoia and the larger question is how do we uh, ensure a mutually sustainable habitat uh, where we do not disturb the human, the balance between the human-animal interaction? See, uh, <clears throat> there are many, many questions in I don't know what's the level of interest in snakes, accordingly I will go. Hello? <laughs> I've been involved with snakes from a very early age. When I say early, I like uh, caught my first snake probably when I was five, five and a half years of age. What is significant about this is, snake is one creature, if you do not know this, it's stone deaf, you know this? All snakes are stone deaf, they, they don't have hearing mechanism at all. So, it literally has ear to the ground, its entire body is to the ground feeling reverberations. To what extent means, let's say there is going to be uh, an earthquake somewhere in Central Asia. If you just observe a cobra today, Let's say in the next three days there's going to be something happening. If you observe a cobra, how he behaves, you know there's going to be an earthquake. If you study it sufficiently, you can even indicate the direction in which it's going to happen and an approximate distance. Whether it's going to happen hundred kilometers away, thousand kilometers away or three thousand kilometers away, you can make an approximate guess like a meteorological science, you can observe because He's got his entire body to the ground, even the smallest reverb that he feels, he behaves differently. So in that context, he is very perceptive. And he is also chemically very perceptive. The only way he knows you is by your chemistry. He doesn't see you very well, but he knows your chemistry very well. See, if you go, don't try this by yourself, huh? because you are on pot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you may not be quick enough for them. If you just go and pick up a cobra simply like this, not by his head or something, just in the middle, hold him, just pick him up, he will simply come without any resistance. If there is no any anxiety or anything within you, you show bit, little bit of anxiety, he will go for you because he sees it as danger immediately. So I was telling people, you know, People were saying, how do we know Sadhguru, we are really meditative and at ease? I said, we must do a cobra test for you <laughs> If you just pick it up, if he just comes, you are at ease. If he reacts, that means you are not at ease. You… I don't know, one picture came for a moment in that video where I'm holding a king cobra. You saw that one? A king cobra, I think no, not in this, it didn't come. I think a king cobra was on the ground. There's another picture where I'm holding a king cobra halfway down and it's just like that. A king cobra is a snake that if it bites you, it'll just hardly give you twenty to forty minutes, you'll die within that. A regular cobra, it, it bites you because you say they have snakes, I'm giving you some knowledge. It mainly, the cobra venom affects your cardiovascular system, it gives you anywhere between four to six hours if you don't get excited you may get another one or two hours extra. If it bites you in the body, you will have four to five hours. If it bites you in the limb, you may get six to eight hours time. But if a viper bites you, you have much less time. If a banded carrot bites you, you have just one and a half to two hours. Because one venom attack affects your neurological system, another venom affects your cardiovascular system. What it is doing to you is your blood gets thicker, so you can't breathe and everything gets tough because the heart 
will start pumping in a certain way because the blood gets thicker and thicker, coagulation happens across the body. Why I'm saying this to you is, the nature of the venom gives him that. Venom is not only in his sac, he's producing it in his entire body. Today, there's so much research gone into the medical sciences, you will see in the next five to ten years' time, almost all neurological ailments will be treated with cobra venom, snake venom and spider… Uh, scorpion venom and spider venom. And some sea snakes which have very special kind of venoms which could kill you in five, ten minutes. So, a lot of research has gone in. Almost for every neurological problem that people are going through like Parkinson's and memory losses, all this they are going to treat with venom. Still it has not been approved but much research has gone in this direction. So it knows your chemistry so well. The beautiful thing about this is, there was a time when I'm sitting in some jungles in uh, the Western Ghats, you guys are on the east, but you must come to the Western Ghats, that's a real jungle, okay? <laughs> It's a rainforest. If I'm sitting and meditating, normally I don't know why, now I'm wondering why I sat in the afternoons, but I always sat in the afternoons, not early mornings. Afternoon I sit for meditation and I'm like sitting for five, six hours. When I open my eyes, a dozen snakes are sitting here. They're just drawn to that chemistry. When your chemistry changes, they just know and it comes. This is why Adiyogi is shown with a cobra on his… Uh, you know, around his neck to indicate that he is meditative, he is still within himself. If you become still within yourself, you pick up the cobra, simply it will come like that. When I lived in the jungles for by myself, no food arrangement, nothing, I mainly survived by drinking honey. Huge beehives are built at a place where the bears can't get. They calculate the bees have such intelligence, they calculate a normal sloth bear weighs how much? Approximately about sixty to seventy kilograms. They build it on a branch where if the bear comes, even if the branch doesn't break, the branch will be sufficiently disturbed for them to go and take care of him. So it is up there and I slowly crawl up. I… Uh, my motorcycle petrol tube, I always keep it extra long, about eighteen inches. And I go with this tube, stick the tube and drink honey three and a quarter liters to one liter honey, if I drink for one or two days, I am fully fired up with food, enough calorie in my system. But when I am drinking this honey, the bees think I am one more big bee, they don't see me. They are looking at the chemistry. If little agitation if you saw, show, they will come for you. In your face, if eight, ten bees bite, you will die of suffocation. In fear, if you open your mouth, if they bite inside, one will do. Just one bee, if it bites you inside your mouth, you will suffocate to death. And above all, you will fall down from the tree, okay <laughs> So, we can give you a cobra test or we can send people from our yoga center who will train you how to handle. Suppose a snake came in, inside, how to take him and leave him in his habitat? He's come here not because he want to listen to the lecture or the conversation or the air conditioning, he's not come for anything that you have come for. By mistake, he's entered. You just have to let him back there. For this, little bit beyond fear you must be to take it, but without training if you take it, you could endanger your own life. So if you want, we can train fifteen, twenty people on the campus who can handle this safely. Sir, I just want to say, you are… you are just my life, okay? <laughs> no, no, this is not a… Uh, okay, sir, my question… Expression. Please ask okay, the question. My question is, sir, uh, you told in your childhood you experienced the realization of ignorance. Uh, some point when I watch your video, I also feel… felt that I don't know really nothing. Nothing means nothing. But after ten minutes or fifteen minutes, my… M I get influenced by my mind or something like that and I lose that… that realization. I want to live like that, I'll, I want to live that… Uh, I want to live like the realization that I don't know. Uh, right. From that realization, my intelligence just becomes pure and mm -hmm. I can uh, look at everything. That's fine. See, uh, just uh, intellectually thinking I do not know is not the point. You must know the pain of not knowing. The pain of not knowing should sear through you, only then 
your intelligence becomes awake. See, just… just look at this. Suppose I ask you to walk from here to there right now, lighter on and you will simply walk like this without noticing anything. Suppose we make this hall pitch dark, you don't know what is next step. Will you walk? Everything alert, all your senses, intelligence, awareness, everything super alert simply because you do not know where the next step is. So I do not know is not an intellectual conclusion. It is the pain of not knowing. It must really sear through you, it won't let you sleep, it won't let you eat, it will keep you in a certain way. When it keeps you in that way, then you will see your intelligence stays awake and alert. In sleep and in wakefulness, it stays alert. When that happens, w see, just now we finished uh, Ganesh Chaturthi. What Ganesh Chaturthi means is, it's all become all about eating now <laughs> We've made it like that because we only see Ganesha's big stomach these days and we are inspired by that. Essentially, you know the story of what happened, that that little boy stopped Shiva and Shiva decided to take off the head of a ghana. A ghana means ghanas are described this way that they were talking in a language that nobody understood and they had limbs which had no bones. Like this it's described in the certain texts. So he took off one of their heads or the chief of the ghana and put it on this boy and made him live with this new head. So he had this new head which is not a human head. Because of this he was extraordinarily intelligent. You heard of those stories where he asked Vyasa that if you dictate something to me, you should not stop. If you stop, I will give up this stupid project and go. If you don't know what you're talking, I'm not going to write down. You must simply speak without a break, only then I will write down. So essentially, Ganesha had enormous… he's Ganesha, not Gajesha, okay? The elephant head came because of Shivakashi calendars. So he's a Ganapati and he has an extraordinary head and an intelligence. Because of this intelligence, he cleared all obstacles. So he became Vigneshwara. So our interest is that in him, that if we have intelligence like this, we will remove all obstacles in our lives. This is the phenomenal… this is the fundamental and the phenomena of Ganesha is just this, that if your intelligence is always on, you simply dissolve all obstacles in your life. So he is a Vigneshwara. But uh, on that day, most people are usually only boosting their belly, not their brain. What it means is you need a new head.